go to the book of Luke tonight. Oh, you ready? Uh, she's full of herself this evening. Praise the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Luke's gospel tonight, if you'll turn with us to Luke chapter number 2. Praying and asking the Lord where to go and the direction. And he led me to the first mention or the first red letter of Luke. We'll look in here in just a few moments. Luke chapter 2, verse 41. We'll start there when you've got your place. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Chapter 2, verse 41. The Bible says, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. And they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass after that after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wished ye not that I must be about my father's business? They understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you to help us this evening. Cleanse, purge, and forgive. Lord, let nothing be in our heart that would hinder you from working. I pray you'd give us uh, Lord, your touch, may thy Holy Ghost of God anoint afresh and strengthen us that we might be able to present thy word as is pleasing to thee. Be with the sick and the afflicted, and Lord, we'll talk with you much about that shortly. But we pray thy will be done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We want to look at this just a little bit tonight, and this is dealing with young Jesus. I really don't have a good title, and I don't have a pretty outline. I've got a few notes today that I put together as we have uh, been to the doctor's office and spent a right smart of time there. Uh, but uh, we've been studying, seeking God's will ahead of that. Uh, and uh, we just made some more notes uh, to share with you tonight. So we're going we're gonna to share these uh, few notes with you that the Lord laid out. A lot of, a lot of it I want to ask some questions because in our passage there is several questions that is asked. Mary had questions in verse 48. Jesus had questions in verse 49. On Calvary, Jesus had questions. Remember Matthew 27, 46, where Jesus hung on Calvary. He asked the Father, he said, Why hast thou forsaken me? Asking a question. You know, a lot of times we have questions about things. We don't know all the answers yet. If you run across somebody that knows all the answers, you might want to watch them for a few days. They'll change. If they're students of the Bible, if they uh, are open to the leadership of the Holy Ghost, they'll change some things because they've got to learn some things as they go. It's, uh, it's not like you arrive all at once. You're still learning some things. Uh, the Apostle Paul said that he had not yet arrived. He had not yet attained. 
he was still learning and, and, and growing in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Mary had some questions here. Jesus had some questions here. Verse 48, Mary had some questions. She asked the Lord something. She says in verse 48, when they saw him, his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorry. So here you've got Jesus' mother. He's 12 years old, and she's asking him a question. Can I frame it like this, and it won't do no harm? Why did you hurt us? Their sorrow, doesn't sorrow come from hurt? Doesn't have to be a physical hurt, here's an emotional hurt. So here Mary is asking Jesus, why have you hurt us? Why have you done this to me? You know, a lot of us could go through some things in life that we've dealt with in the Lord's work, in the Lord's walk, uh, that we just don't understand. We don't understand why God let this happen or why God had this to happen. You know, some things He lets and some things He does. And uh, I try to be careful about putting the accusation on him, but uh, I do understand he is God and he's in control. So when you think of, of Miss Mary, and here she is after a broken heart, and she looks at her son and she says, Why have you hurt us this way? Your father and I sought thee sorrowing. You know, I thought about Job. I've done some reading in Job today and, and uh, looking at some things there with Job. Job didn't understand everything. Now, when you go to Job and study Job, you've got to remember when you start the study of Job in chapter 1, Job is an upright, he's a righteous man, he's a man that feared God, and he's a man that stayed away from evil. He eschewed evil. So as good as a man could live, Job was when the temptation came. When the temptation came his way, Job was living exactly in the perfect will of God. God said, hey, Satan, hath thou considered my servant Job? I mean, listen, if we're going to put somebody up to go to battle, we want to put up our best, don't we? And here the Lord, here the Lord says to, to uh, uh, Satan, said, have you considered my servant Job? And then as you go through the chapter or the chapters of Job, you find Job asking several times questions. I was reading there in one passage today in Job how that he was... Uh, uh, he said, the Lord knows the way that I take. I sought for him on the right, and I couldn't find him. I sought for him on the left, I couldn't find him. Uh, but he's working around here, but yet I can't pinpoint where. That's what Job went through. Job had some questions on where the Lord was and why the Lord wasn't with him and why the Lord was letting all this go on like it was. But he didn't get all the answers right then. God help us to ask for the grace we need and be willing to wait for God to give the answer. We don't always know exactly what's doing, uh, God's doing. Judy was sharing with me this afternoon some little uh, story about a, a farmer and somebody and uh, talking about not liking some of the ingredients that goes in, in bread. said he didn't like just lard. I don't know who does. Uh, don't, like, don't like some of the things that goes in making bread. But when you get it all together and mashed up and cooked right, it ain't nothing better than a good old biscuit. But to separate the ingredients, we don't always like all the different ingredients that God's using in our life. We don't always understand the things that's going on in our life. But what God's doing is He's putting something together that's going to come out for your good and His glory. All things still work to good for God's glory. Amen, Romans 8, we know that. So here, here Mary is asking Jesus, why have you hurt us? Why would Jesus do this to his mother? And I, I mean, if you, would, if you would, for a minute, not disrespectful, but think of Jesus as a normal child. I, I thought about this illustration. I'm not going to make you all do that. But I thought about this illustration. What would be good would be have uh, Brother Scott and Miss Tammy come up here and Corey act like their child, which he sort of acts like. His child sometimes. But anyway, we'll go on with that. But they come to the temple at the feast time, at the Passover time. All kinds of things going on. As, as Tammy and Scott would come up to, to me as I was directing things and taking care of their sacrifices and the offerings and all that they're doing there as the priest, and little Corey's just sort of being little Corey and 
Where's little Corey? What happened, little Corey? I'm going to come back to that here in just a minute. But you think of that. That's what went on here. Mary and Joseph are doing what is right, and they lose Jesus. I preached a message out this years ago, couldn't find it. I don't know where in the world outlines that, but I preached something about them losing their children, but uh, I couldn't find it. So I just had to go from scratch and let the Lord feed me a little bit today. They, they, didn't, they didn't understand why he would hurt them. They didn't understand his word in this passage. He spoke to them, verse 50 says, and they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. He spake some stuff to them, which we've got there, red letter, what he said, but they didn't understand it. That's, it's amazing that mama, now God bless us daddies, but uh, mamas usually understand everything. That kid can go, and, and, and she'll say he wants such and such. And I'm like, have you lost your mind? How did you figure that out? How do you know what he was saying? And, 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 and she'll be exactly right. I, I did not interpret baby talk. I wasn't good with that. If they couldn't point at it and say they wanted one of them, then they was in trouble. Find mama or find nana, because I had no clue what they were saying. Here Jesus is talking as a 12-year-old son to his mother Mary, and she's not understanding what he said, but get a hold of this. Just some good teaching principles tonight, y'all. The Bible says that she kept all these sayings in her heart, verse 51. She didn't understand it, but she didn't dismiss it either. See, what you got to learn is sometimes you don't understand what he's saying, but if you'll hold on to it, in a little while he'll give you an answer to it, and you'll learn. I noted in studying that there was, there was a lot of times in, in the disciples' lives, in chapter 9, verse 45, a lot of times in the disciples' lives, they didn't understand stuff. Come apart, come apart, come apart. There we go. 945 says, But they understood not his saying, and it was hid from them that they perceive it not, and they feared to ask him of that saying. Sometimes the disciples didn't know what he was saying. You go on over to 1834, not the year, not, not talking about your birthday, Scott. Um, chapter 18 in the book of Luke, verse 34, says, And they understood none of those things, and his saying was hid from them, neither knew they the things which were spoken. There's a lot of times throughout the scriptures that the disciples did not understand what the Lord was saying. If you'll hang around a little while, though, Hang on to what you don't know. Somewhere down the road, he'll give you some understanding. We go through trials and tribulations, and a lot of times in those, we don't understand why or what's going on. I'm going to tell you, I, I'll testify tonight. I have been through a lot of stuff I did not understand. Some I still don't understand. I'm just waiting on him to give me an answer for it. A lot of folks say, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask him some questions about this. Can I give you a little something on that? You ain't going to give a care about this, that, or the other from here when you get to the other side. <laughs> when you see the glory there, you're not going to care about anything but falling down and worshiping his feet. And I want to watch some of you that ain't never shouted, shout, because you're going to when you get over yonder. Amen. It's going to be on, friend. There won't be no fleshly holdbacks. It'll all be just what it should be when you get there. Amen. Amen. I, 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 I can't wait for that shouting good time. Another place, John chapter 12, verse 16, the disciples wasn't understanding. Later on, he gives understanding. You remember, when the Lord was giving out a lot of those parables back there, uh, particularly the parable of the sower, y'all remember the parable of the sower? He gives out that parable, and the disciples didn't understand it. And when everybody else sort of got away, they said, hey, huh, what would that mean? And you know what he done? He explained it to him, just exactly what it, what it, what he was talking about, who the who the sower was, who the who the evil one was. He showed it all to him, told him all about it, and explained it to him. So sometimes we don't get the answers because we don't ask what we need to. Here, here, the Lord, as a twelve-year-old son, is talking to his mother. She asked, "Why did you do this?" 
and he answers. She didn't understand the answer at this time, but he did answer her. He says, wish you not, I must be about my father's business. Now, when you think about that, as I, as I was thinking about using Scott and Tammy for an example and little Corey running around there, as they would be there at the priest and they're offering up their sacrifices and they're taking care of all that stuff, they're fulfilling the law. That's important. They are fulfilling the law. The law said at the Feast of Passovers, at the Passover time, you just come and do this uh, ceremonial stuff that they had to do. That is fulfillment of the law. Law's still in full effect. Jesus ain't died on Calvary yet. You got that? Until Jesus dies on Calvary, there's law. The veil of the temple was not rent in twain until Jesus hung on Calvary. That's where your law stopped. That's where that was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So while they're there doing that, little old 12-year-old Jesus sort of just got gone. Now, <clears throat> let me use my Polish voice. Why don't you know where your son's at? Weren't you paying attention? Why don't they know where Jesus is at? Why did it take them three days to find him? Because they wasn't watching him when he walked away. He didn't just vanish out of their sight. He had to walk to the place he was going to. He's a 12-year-old boy. They didn't have bicycles then. Fastest thing they had probably was a camel. Y'all getting the picture? So she's asking these questions. They didn't understand his work. And then he's gone. Did y'all notice that he was gone how many days? Why does three days stand out to us? In the grave, three days, three days. Watch some of them things because there's they some good stuff you can dig out when you go to studying some of that. He was out of their sight for three days, three nights. Here he's gone from their presence in the early days, three days. But they found him. Why? Does anybody know why they found him? Because they looked for him. That's a good idea, ain't it? Hey, man, it's hard to catch fish if you don't go fishing. It's hard to find something if you ain't looking. Hey, man, it's hard to get something you ain't asking for. So there's, there's, a, there's some good things there. They were, they were not sure where he was at for three days. But they were faithful to the law. Don't forget that. But the reason they lost Jesus is they lost focus. While, while Scott and Tammy would be here looking at the priest and doing their sacrifices, they're not watching Jesus. That's why they lost him. They wasn't watching. They wasn't paying attention to where he went. And when they left out, they didn't look to see if he was there. You can't blame just the time they was there in front of the priest, but they went three days without him. Uh-oh. We, we better go find our son. Huh? They didn't know where he was at because they wasn't paying attention. Now listen to me. The purpose of the law. Go to Galatians chapter number 3. The purpose of the law. The purpose of the law. What are they doing? They're fulfilling the law in the Passover feast. But the purpose of the law is to see Jesus. See, when you look at verse 24 in Galatians 3, the Bible says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. What's the schoolmaster going to do? Bring you to Jesus. Schoolmaster, the law, is going to teach you to look at Jesus. The fulfilling of the law is in vain if you don't see Jesus. But after that faith has come, we're no longer under the schoolmaster. Schoolmaster time is not necessary once they show you Jesus. Once the law shows you who Jesus is, the law is not a complete necessary. Because the whole point of it is, is to show you you can't fulfill the law. That's what the law is out there for anyway, show you you couldn't fulfill it. Here's what God requires and you can't do it. Jesus did. Jesus said he come not to take away the law or to abolish the law, but he came to fulfill the law. 
in him was the law fulfilled. He lived exactly from day one till he crucified on Calvary and went back to the Father. He, he lived exactly the perfect law fulfillment, the life that should be for me and you. Because we can't. We can't for, now, that don't mean you don't try just because you can't. You ought to be living the best you can for Jesus' sake. Amen. But you cannot fulfill the law. You can't hold everything. He said that if you break one, you, you're guilty of them all. Ain't that what the Bible says? So, in North Carolina language, if I speed 56 and a 55, I'm guilty of every law in North Carolina. Do you understand that? That's the same thing Jesus is saying. So if you told a little bitty white lie, you're guilty of murder and all the other things that's there. You're guilty. You're, you're guilty of breaking the law. Jesus was the fulfillment of the law for us. Amen? That's what, he, that's what he's doing. He's fulfilling the law. He asked them a question. Mary asked some questions. Now Jesus asked a question. How is it that you sought me? Wish you not that must be about my father's business? How is it that you sought me? You wasn't watching me? You wasn't paying attention? You didn't see which way I turned? You didn't see where I went? I'm in the temple teaching. You don't, you don't know where I'm at? How is it you sought me? God help us to keep our focus on him. Don't lose sight of him. Amen. We got, we got heartaches and sorrows when we lose sight of him. So what's the message for us in this? In the message here we see one thing that stands out is Jesus is a 12-year-old boy. Where did they find him? In the temple doing what? Why wasn't he on his bicycle playing in the backyard? 12 years old. He put aside personal pleasure to fulfill his father's will. Twelve years old. Where some would be climbing trees and having a big time. Throwing skipping rocks across the Jordan River. They're having a ball. Jesus came for the purpose of fulfilling the father's business. So he put aside personal pleasure to take care of the father's business. He put aside personal pleasure so he could do the father's business. As a 12-year-old boy, he put aside personal pleasure so he could do the father's business. He put aside his personal desires and pleasure so he could do the father's business as a 12-year-old boy. And we have a hard time getting folks to be faithful to the house of the Lord for just a little while. It's hard for us to put aside our personal pleasures, personal desires to fulfill the Father's will. I believe, I believe the Father's will is that we be found faithful in the house of the Lord. We do understand work folks. We understand that. But everybody that ain't here tonight ain't here. It, it's not that they're working that they can't be here. Personal fulfillment, personal pleasures. It's got a lot of folks out of church tonight. Be that way come certain Sundays. Be that way certain Sunday nights. I can prove from the scriptures that I've said before that we ought to be in church on Sunday morning. We ought to be on church Sunday night. They met first day of the week. They met on the morning. They met in the evening. Jesus come showed up to them in the upper room in the morning and the evening. That's why we have morning and evening services on Sundays. Amen. We'll take it off every once in a while for special occasions, but I'll be at the house of God. Amen. So he put aside his personal pleasure. Instead of playing like a 12-year-old, he was about his father's business. In verse 47, they were astonished and at his understanding and answers. He sat there in the midst of them in verse 46, both hearing them and asking questions. And when they heard him, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So he not only asked some questions, he answered some questions. Not everybody's got the, the answer they was looking for in some of it, but he did answer some questions. Mama asked a question, and he said, well, I must be about my father's business. There's an answer. They didn't understand it, but that was an answer. Sometimes we don't understand 
his answers to our questions. But here you see his powerful teaching. There's 12-year-old kids come in, sit down. Uh, they found him in the midst of other kids? No. Doctors. Highly educated folk. Here he is, Jesus, sitting in the temple. Now, I don't know. It says doctors. I don't know whether they're meaning medical doctors or spiritual doctors. I'm going to put it on spiritual because they're sitting in the temple. They're not in another meeting place. They're in the temple. So I'm going to give it to the spiritual side. And here's a 12-year-old son of Miss Mary, Jesus himself, and he's got them astonished. What a powerful teacher. Boy, I'm telling you, I, 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 I'd love to sit there. I'd love to hear him expound the scriptures, wouldn't you? Just to get to, just to, get to sit there and listen to him. Now, some folks I'm sure wouldn't sit and listen because they're not going to listen to a little 12-year-old tell them nothing. In preaching through the years, I, I, I watched them as, as some young folks would surrender to preach, and I watched some of the the big guns, so to speak, and how that they was more occupied with something else when them little old young fellas get up there to preach. I, I like the wisdom of the gray hairs, but I like to hear them little old young fellas. They'll give you something. God give them something. They ain't got a clue what they're preaching half the time. God give them some great uh, revealing of a mystery, and they're just preaching what God gave them, and they really don't got a full understanding of what all of it is, but it sure is good. I, I encourage, I like it. I like to hear the young fellas preach. They have it every once in a while. Brother Jeremy's, some of that bunch up there will have a little uh, young preacher's fellowship. And it's good to go hear them. Amen. I used to be one of them back a few days ago. <laughs> they put me up one time in uh, Indiana. Right before lunch, they gave me five minutes. <laughs> I quit in five minutes, too. You can believe that. And then all the other preachers fussed at the pastor for, or the moderator for giving me such a short time. But anyway, uh, God, God blessed us and helped us. His powerful teaching. The Lord gives us powerful teaching. What he says is right. You may not understand it completely, but what he says is right. It's right. A lot of folks tries to explain him away, and a lot of folks tries to change what he said. What he said is right. Whether you understand it or not, it's right. Settle, settle, settle on that King James Bible. It's right. What Jesus said in there is right. It's watering it down and making it fit a little better, more to the 2023 20, year, you know, all that old language. You, yeah, but it's right. It's right. I, I had a, I was reading my, my old Bible. Uh, today, and I had a note in the back of it, and I, I wrote this down. I said, a wrench in a surgeon's hand is like a false Bible in a preacher's hand. It just ain't going to get done what he needs done. How many of you want, hey, Miss Judy, you want the Dr. Branch come walking in with a wrench in his hand? When he ought to have a little bitty scalpel, which you don't want no scalpel either, but uh, uh, you, 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 don't, you don't want to use the wrong tools. But the Lord, the Lord, Lord, give us the right tool. It's because it bothers folks and convicts folks is the reason they don't want it. So he put aside personal pleasure, and he was powerful in his teaching. Also, look at verse 51. It says, and when uh, he went down with them, and came to Nazareth, and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these things, all these sayings in her heart. Y'all know what the word subject means there, don't you? Obedient. Pliable is what I wrote down. I use the word pliable because it helps me keep it in alliteration. But pliable means that they are workable to the circumstance. In all truth, Jesus is Lord, even at 12. He's, he's King of kings, 
the Son of God at 12 years old. But he shows us that we should also be obedient to those that have rule over us. See, a lot of folks don't like this thing of obedience. Proverbs speaks much about folks that do not want to obey. Proverbs tells much about the stiff necks, the stubborn, those that don't want to uh, uh, obey what they're being told to do. And it, there's a very bad set of consequences that goes with those folks that don't want to listen. And we look at a, we look at a youngin that doesn't want to listen, and we, we think, boy, he just needs a good, uh, good paddling sometimes. But that, that's not always the only thing that's wrong. Though they do, need, they do need discipline. I'm not against discipline. Proper discipline. But it's a matter not of the head. It's a matter of the heart. The reason folk don't want to listen. Why is it God tells us things as grown adults that we should be pliable to what he says? We should obey what he says. He gave us a free will, but we should be obedient to what he says for us to do because we want to please him. That's what Jesus is doing. He's honoring his father and his mother on the earth. He's listening. He was subject to them. He's being obedient to them. In reality, he's God in the flesh and really could have handled everything himself. But he grew much in stature with God. And with man. See, there's folks watching him grow up. And watching him grow up makes a lot of difference on other folks. You know, his brothers there didn't believe for a spell. They didn't believe he was Jesus for a spell. His mama saw enough in him that when you go over to John 2, the first thing we looked at over there, one of the first miracles in John 2, he, he turns the water to the wine. His, his mother... Miss Mary says to those, said, hey, if you'll do what he said, he'll take care of your problem. How does she know that? Now, a lot of folks says that's his first miracle. I don't believe it. I think there's more miracles performed before that because Mama had to know that he could handle it. Because Mama the one that suggested he handle it. So Miss Mary... There's been something went on in their lives that Miss Mary knowed he could take care of the he could take care of the problem. Just do whatever he tells you and it'll be all right. See that that just shows you the life that he lived. It matters how you live around those that are watching you. There's folks watching us. They watch how we do and 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 they'll they'll throw out phrases, well, that ain't much of a Christian. If he's a Christian, I don't want to be one. She's a Christian, I don't want to be They throw out all those kind of phrases. Why? Because they've seen us do something that they know is contrary to what the Scripture teaches. See, folks ain't as ignorant as they act to be. A lot of folks act like they're ignorant of the Word of God. They know what the Word of God is. Listen to me. A week and a half ago, a young fella playing football got hurt, fell out, having a heart attack on the field. I'm sure not all those folks are faithful to the house of God. But they knew what to do. They knew because they watched others that when crisis comes, when hard times comes, when we can't handle what's before us, what do we do? We get on our knees and call on the God of heaven that can. They didn't worry about the ratings. Those, those announcers and folks on TV they did not, the sports guys that was on there, they didn't worry about what everybody said. He said, we're going to pray right now. Now, I ain't so sure that old boy don't know Jesus. He had faith to pray, and he wasn't ashamed to pray to the Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I, I like that. I hate that they had to go through a crisis for that young man's life, but some folk need to see Jesus. Be careful because folks are watching the way that we're living. And we influence them not by what we say, but by the way we live. So the Lord gave us some pretty good principles here to be pliable, meaning to obey, to be powerful in the teachings, and to put aside personal pleasures. Lord, help us to teach those about us 
about the Lord. What he was teaching them was not about himself, not just some uh, uh, cultism. What he was teaching them was the Father's business. He went into that temple that day and taught them and astonished those doctors in his teaching. And that just shows you that God, God can use young folk as well as older folk. I like to hear the wisdom of those that's been through it. But I also like to hear the youngins that don't know nothing to do but just ask God for the help and let God do. You can get a lot out of that. you know that? These folks that come say, well, I, 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 don't, I don't know if I can do that, preacher. I ain't worried about you doing it. What about God doing it through you? God doing it with you? God helping you to achieve what God wants you to do? These folks say, well, you know, preacher, I, I, I can't sing. Well, you may not be able to, but if God's put a song in your heart, you might ought to share. Because you don't ever know what God can do when you offer up. Serious note, the little lad's got five loaves and two fishes, right? There is no way he can feed that crowd. There is no way possible for him to feed that crowd. And he didn't. Jesus did. When you take what you got and let God use it, he can use you for the full purpose of what he needs to. He could have fed, fed that 5,000 with one, one fish and one piece of bread. He done the same miracle with five loaves and two fishes. He can, do, he can do with what we give him to do with what needs to be done. May God help us to be pliable, obedient. Just mind him. You just don't know. You just don't know what your obedience will do uh, that the Lord could use it to touch a heart or to help somebody. That's why I say in invitation time, when God touches your heart to come, you, you might think, well, I, I not, really ain't done nothing I ain't supposed to do this week. I, well, maybe God just wants to use you so somebody else will move. Maybe there's somebody close watching you that says, well, if so-and-so goes down there, it would be all right for me to go down there. I don't want to go down there by myself and somebody else down there. And that's one, one thing Miss Judy comes and prays for folks that needs to come. It ain't just that she's coming because she's a bad person. Hello. A lot of times she's coming, she's praying for other folks. She's seeking the Lord help other folks. Amen? Amen. That's just a few little thoughts the Lord shared with me today. Thought I'd share it back with you or last night and today. On the Lord Jesus, the youth of the Lord Jesus. My, 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 what he can, what he can do. And uh, just think what he can do with us. Amen? I, I'm, I'm nothing and I'm not trying to... Uh, gain anything by saying that I'm nothing and, and all that kind. I'm not trying to be super modest and none of that. I'm serious. I'm nothing without the help of the Lord. But I want him to take me and to use me that he might touch others. Sinners will be saved and the saints of God be strengthened. Those suffering, I could help relieve some of their suffering. Help them to go through the trials that they go through. So that's my prayer. God will let me be a Help to somebody. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Take that and hope the Lord will use it and help you a little bit tonight. We'll go through some prayer requests now. And uh, you might want to pray about the boom boom. I don't know what they got blowing up out there. Fireworks. Why? Oh, it's your birthday. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's your birthday. They're doing it for her birthday. Amen. All right, remember Miss Gail? She went back to the doctors today, and they was doing some blood work. There's some stuff they're watching there. So uh, lift up Miss Gail Leard and uh, pray that the blood work will be good. They've they done some more blood draws today to, to look at it, do some comparing. Uh, so pray for Miss Gail Leard. Uh, Miss Judy sees, uh, well, she's got a little bit of physical therapy to try to get done. And then the doctor has her scheduled for surgery on March the 24th. So nothing changes. She'll be... 
getting her neck fixed up March the 24th. He said, forget the head, we'll just try to fix the neck and go with it. But uh, he didn't have a small enough brain to fit in her head, so he... <laughs> That's right, can't fix it. It is what it is. So pray for her and her little neck surgery that she's got coming up. It's just a little procedure. It ain't no big deal, but uh, y'all pray for her. That, uh, pray that it is a successful deal, and I have all confidence in the world. The doctor, he's one of the best in the state. Um, so just pray that everything will go good. Pray they don't hurt her too bad doing the physical therapy. That's the bigger thing. Just pray that that goes easy for her. And they realize real quick that... Uh, what she needs is surgery instead of getting whooped around. So pray for that. Uh, continue to pray much for Pee Wee and Miss Martha. God knows all their needs there. So I just pray that God will help them and meet their needs and give health and strength to them uh, in these days. Um, Miss Nikki's got hers coming up. Uh, remind me the date. I forget the date now. Huh? 27th so remember hers and then Miss Terry's is coming up 25th so we got 20 25 and 27 uh, surgeries coming up so pray about all those Miss Nikki Miss Terry that uh, they'll get Terry some relief and get hers fixed up um, yes ma'am Cheyenne fell last night or fell yesterday afternoon at school and broke her arm uh, somewhere up in here so uh, she goes to the orthopedic in the morning, and so pray for her, pray for her pain. It does hurt right smart. Uh, don't know what they're going to have to do to fix it. Uh, they may leave it as it is, but uh, just, just pray that uh, it'll be as least painful as it can be for her. Uh, but she'll see the orthopedic in the morning, and they'll decide what they're going to do. Right now they got it in the sling, uh, and she's been pretty, pretty painful through the day, so. She bumped it on the couch. God bless her little heart. Uh, and that lit the world up. But uh, just continue to pray for her uh, and Brittany as she tends to her in this thing. All right. Any other requests tonight? Unspoken, Brother Scott. Miss Kay? I'm okay. Yes, sir. Remember Corey's Aunt Candy in Missouri. Uh, she's had some health issues. They've done some work. Still having some issues, so just lift her up in prayer. Pray the Lord touch Miss Candy. Pray for Nathan. He's gone to the beach. Pray that the fleas of a thousand camels. Never mind, I'll not do that. But anyway, uh, pray for him. Pray for safety. They have a good time and they behave themselves. Lord, take care of them there. So lift them up to the Lord in prayer. He's gone for a week. I may disappear and not be here Sunday. I don't know. I just have to wait and see how it goes. I'm kidding. I ain't going. Huh? And uh, Jacob, pray for his crowd because Caitlin has now gone today to Ohio to work. They uh, moved her from here, this location, to a location in Ohio. So she's moved up there today uh, to work there. So much prayer for her. Pray for God to work in her life and give her safety and help her and uh, meet her needs there. So lift up KK. Lift up Jacob and <laughs> Tanya. He'll be, he'll be stir crazy. So uh, he's already crazy, but he'll be worse. Uh, but I know that, that, that stuff. Y'all know what it is for a youngin to go off. So uh, pray much there. Anyone else got a request tonight? Yes, ma'am. Amen. All right, pray about that. 30th. That's a Monday. Good luck. <laughs> you do know that's a civil case, and it'll be sometime that week. It don't mean it'll be Monday morning. Yeah, yeah. All right, pray about that. Pray the Lord will work things out ahead of that and uh, make it a little easier on that situation. So pray about the 30th. So we got the... Uh, 25th, 27, 30. Uh, a lot of praying to do this month. Amen. So let's ask God to help in these many, 
matters. God knows the needs there. Uh, lift up the lost. Pick out somebody and pray hard for them. Amen. You got family and friends. Uh, you got folks that's backslid. Uh, listen, if they're not living totally surrendered to God, you can call it backslid. Amen. Ought to be totally surrendered to the Lord, serving Him uh, where they need to be with Him. Amen. And uh, pray God will move there to help folks to get right and get where they need to be. Pray for my family. I got folks in my family that needs to get surrendered to God, uh, pliable, usable uh, in the Lord's work. So just pray God have His will and His way there. All right. Anyone else got a request tonight? Amen. All right. Continue to pray for the full healing of the baby. Do you have something, Ms. Karen? Which one? Oh. All right. Remember those two requests, her sister and the neighbor. Remember? Okay. Remember her. All right, anyone else? Yeah, remember the Paul and Janice salvation. Pray for our leaders. Remember Bill and Ann. Pray for them. Lord, meet their needs and minister to them. They watch with us live every service, so do continue to pray for them. Lord, touch and meet their needs. Uh, pray for the church work. God will get behind us and help us and Go before us and give us what we need in getting things done for him. Help these young folks to know about Jesus. Amen. Amen. They need to know. We need to. We need them in here. Uh, teach them what Jesus said. Amen. All right. Anyone else got a request? Yes, ma'am. grandson needs Jesus. Wow. That's a miracle there. Yeah, if you see if you see the vehicle you wonder how they even found her, period. Much less her be able to go back to work right now, because that was that was horrible. Uh, but thank the Lord. Just you know, that's a good thing. Just thank God for what he's doing there. And uh, remember uh, I just lost her name. Ryan's family. Uh, Preacher Ryan, remember that family. God touch and help them. Uh, several churches going through some changes. So much prayer for God's work. A lot of men of God is stepping down and throwing in the towel, just to be truthful. Uh, various reasons, various problems, various hindrances so much prayer for the men of God the churches that will be vacant uh, that God will move and help in in those God knows the needs amen anyone else got a request this evening before we pray and go all right brother Roberts you lead us we're going to pray with you buddy ah. 